Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, polarization just quickly, and I'm going to show you on a spectrum analyzer uh, the real world effect you can have if, when you've got the polarization correct and when you've got it incorrect for what you're trying to receive. So first of all, I'll just show you what uh, antennas I'm going to be talking about. So you can see on the roof here, I've got a couple of these discone antennas. These are these um, two here that you see with the spikes coming out the side, and they're vertically polarized. And here on the other side of the roof, you can see my horizontally polarized TV antenna. So that's just a standard TV antenna, and these are just um, vertically polarized discone antennas for my comms stuff. So what is polarization? Well, in simple terms, it's the plane that the electric field travels as the radio wave propagates through the air. So if you've got a vertically polarized antenna, it means that the electric field as it goes through the air will be going along this plane vertically, not horizontally, because if that electric field is vertically, um, the, the magnetic field will be horizontally. But I'm just concerned about the electric field here. So on a vertically polarized antenna like the discone that I've got here, the RF will be in parallel to the actual antenna. So if the antenna is vertical, the uh, electric field will be vertical as it propagates. And when you want to receive that signal, you also want to match that polarization. So because we're transmitting vertically, we want a vertical receiver. So it matches the same plane that the RF is traveling on, uh, the electric field of the RF that's traveling on. So if you had it transmitting vertically, but you had an antenna horizontally, the problem is that energy wouldn't go onto the receiving antenna and you won't be able to receive it. It'll just go straight past it. So if you're transmitting vertically, you want to receive vertically and same with horizontal. So what I'll do now is just have a quick look at what's transmitting from the tower in Brisbane and I'll show you what I've got on the screen here. Actually, I'll start with what I've got on the screen. Here I'm just looking at a spectrum display from 170 meg to 230. Now this covers all our TV stations and digital radio stations. Um, so the TV station bandwidth allocation is 7 megahertz. And it's a bit rough, but this is one of the things I'm going to be pointing out here. From well, centered on 177.5 is channel 7. So in that area from about there to there is channel 7. And then we have the SBS channel here for the next 7 megahertz bandwidth. And then we go to channel 9. And then there's nothing. And then up here, just sticking with TV for a moment, channel 10 is up here, centered on 219.5. And ABC is 226.5, centered there with 7 megahertz bandwidth. Now in the middle, as you can see, nice and nice and powerful, is digital radio. Now that's the old analog channel 9 allocation. But you can see there's actually three um, separate transmissions here. Now I've been through this before when I did a video on digital radio, so check that out if you want in depth about that. But basically there's three ensembles here within one channel as well. But the main thing you can see is that the, the um, radio is much higher than the TV. And it's also, I mean, this program isn't the greatest, but it's also relatively flat, which is what you'd expect. Whereas the TV ones are all over the place. Now, the way I'm looking at that spectrum is I've got the discone antenna. So the vertically polarized antenna just coming in here and feeding this RTL SDR dongle. And I'm just looking at on this program um, called spectrum. I've also got one of these set up near my server, which has the, um, because I've got the TV servers on it, I have it connection from the TV antenna. So I'm going to look at that now and see how that differs to this one. Okay, so here it is with the same scale. And what you can see is the TV channels are nice and strong and flatter than before. And the digital radio has disappeared almost. So that's using the horizontal uh, polarized antenna, which is just my TV antenna. So for TV, that's much better. These little dips in the uh, signal here is just a quirk of this program, but they're, they're flat in real life. So that's a stark contrast to the previous one. And if you see them side by side, you'll see the same scale and everything, same gain, same everything. Um, you can really see that the radio is much better on the vertically polarized one and uh, TV on the horizontally polarized one. And just a second ago, oddly enough, this one just dropped off on both of them. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, something with the transmitter maybe. But that's why you really have to match the receiving antenna to the transmitting antenna. Okay, so if we get on the ACMA website and find the info for those transmitters, we can start off with the TV one down the bottom, which was channel 7, 
and you can see here that it's horizontally polarized. Okay, centered at 177.5 meg, uses 7 megahertz of bandwidth and 82 kilowatts of power. A bit of power coming out there. But the bit I'm interested in is the uh, polarization of the antenna. So it's horizontally polarized. Going up from there was SBS, again horizontally polarized. Then was channel 9, horizontally polarized. Now the next few are for the radio, but they only take about 1.5 meg of bandwidth. So the three of them fit within the original 7 megahertz bandwidth of the old analog channel 9. Um, but now they're vertically polarized. So that one's vertical, that one's vertical, and that one's vertical. So they're the three ensembles for digital radio, which I've done a video on digital radio if you want to learn more about that. But going up from there, we've got channel 10 at 219.5, back to horizontally polarized, and ABC, horizontally polarized. So as you can see, even though the frequencies are roughly the same, they're in the same sort of area on the spectrum, and the antennas are good for their frequencies, they still have to match the uh, polarization, otherwise the signal gets trashed. And if I try to tune in a TV station from this antenna, the vertically polarized disco antenna, it just won't work. It can't lock onto it. And same with the digital radio on the other one. So that's why polarization is important. Now, you might be thinking, what about wireless devices, little Wi-Fi things like a phone or, or that sort of thing? Now, the access point will have a certain polarization. That's its characteristics of when they built it. But the difference there is you've got your phone, let's say a phone, and if you turn it horizontally compared to vertically, it won't make much difference really. And the reason is you're drowned in signal here. So the, the RF, there's plenty of it around, so you, you're probably going to get some. And the other thing is the walls, the ceiling, the floor, the desk, all the furniture, anything that's really able to have the RF bounce off will change its polarization. So it might start off, let's say, vertical, bounces off a wall, comes off at some funny angle, then off the next wall that maybe it's horizontal by now or back to vertical. It, it, as it bounces, it'll change anyway. But again, because you're smothered in signal, um, you, you're going to get some anyway. But if you're doing a point-to-point -point Wi-Fi link between, say, two buildings, uh, you'll definitely want to match the polarization. So that's more important there. Then you won't be able to manage it at home anyway because everyone's going to want to turn their phone to whatever angle they want to look at it. So anyway, I just wanted to show you on the spectrum the significance of polarization and um, again from the transmitters up at Mount Kufa where I'm still going to have the meet up next week as I mentioned in the last video. So I hope to see you there so we can do this nerdy stuff among the transmitters. Anyway, that's all for now. Till next time, take it easy.